Welcome to the Ask Dr. Nima show, your adjustment above Atlas. We're here in beautiful, sunny Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I have my good friend Stefan. He is my right hand at this moment in time, helping me get the message of transformation, of healing, of mind, body, wellness, stress, transcendence <laughs> to the planet. If you have a question, hashtag Ask Dr. Nima, and I'm gonna do my best to answer you. Your inaugural episode of The Adjustment Above Atlas, we have a very interesting case. A case who's just become a friend. And the interesting thing is when I do overviews with people, it's a great equalizer. I become very close. Every person that I've ever done an overview on, I remember the case clearly. And when they become real and authentic with me, there's no choice but to just bond with them. So I bond with all of my clients in a very deep spiritual way. Jason was introduced to me through April. She shows me a Facebook post of this guy by the name of Speeches Beyond. He's a hip hop artist who is going through a real down in the dumps. Broke up with his girlfriend, uh, just quit his job, and his mother's dying of cancer. Like he's just hit rock bottom and he has this dream and aspiration of becoming a rapper, a hip hop artist. But there's all this crap going on around him. So she says, Nima, you gotta help him. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'm, I love rap, I love hip hop. I introduced myself and said, let's do a session. How this session worked was a very common stress that he's going through, aside from the fact that his mother's dying of cancer, he's going through stress because he doesn't know where he's at. He's stressed because he feels trapped, he has a dream of becoming a hip hop artist, but he needs the reality of the money. How many of us are in this situation where we have a dream of being somewhere, but we feel that we're stuck where we are? So mission impossible is to get us to the point of gratitude for where we are now. That was my goal in our overview today. Tell me the biggest stress going on in your life that, we're, that you'd like to snap your fingers and have neutralized and change? Probably a uh, lack of stability, not being stable, which again is something that comes directly from my past. So I'm looking for a job and I made a resume and then I realized, wow, I don't really have much on my resume. Like I don't really have any skills. I don't education. really have any proper okay, education. You Perfect know, like, scene. The realization where you saw the resume and you're like, holy shit, like <laughs> what the heck? Being stuck in that moment in time where it was a year ago, yeah. when I realized I have to get a real job compared to doing what I want to do, right. I was pretty stressed out. We uncovered a scene where he recalls the stress of that uncertainty of where he's at. And it just so happened to be a year ago when he was typing up his resume, he realized that, oh my God, he doesn't really have much credentials. So all of these thoughts of inadequacy and stress and regret from the past and all this resentment, it came up. And some really neat insights were made uh, about where that came from. This feeling that you felt last year is that all too familiar one that you felt back in the day that yeah. you haven't yet fully cleared. So I want you to pick a scene, a specific scene where it was all happening, where you just remember feeling the most overwhelmed and trapped. Probably I went by myself to the park and then I got surrounded by 10 guys and they basically beat the crap out of me. Okay, the fantasy would have been that you were in the park or you were kind of in a place with mom and dad and everybody together, you know, that was the fantasy. Yeah. Instead of the reality of being beaten up. The fantasy is that you had a group of friends and support. That would be good. That would have been good. That would have been the fantasy. So yeah. the reality was the, the, the bullying. The fantasy is that everybody was kind of on the same page with a group. Yeah. Okay, good. So we discovered it came from when he was 10 years old and he, you know, his mother goes to jail and he's now has to go to this community, this small uh, community where he's the only white kid. Imagine being the only white kid with blue eyes in a society where there's a resentment towards white people. So he recalled the scene where that happened, where he was jumped by 10 guys and uh, some neat insights were discovered from that exact scene that he's still kind of holding on to that reminds him of what he's going through now, that trapped feeling. What I'm about to show you and introduce you to this skill and overview is the realization that you cannot have one feeling without its exact opposite. My awareness at the time always is, is on the negative, but there is a corresponding equivalent that happens simultaneously using the same pathways in our, in, our, in our nerves. The second that you become aware of it, it actually neutralizes it into a state of love and gratitude. So 
go to that moment where you saw the, the, the kids around you. Feel the trap so that you can feel it's uncomfortable over here, Jason. At the same time that you felt trapped, simultaneously, your mind splits and creates a freedom. Tell me in that moment of fear, where was your freedom? I accepted that they were hurting also and that's why they were projecting it onto me. Was there a freedom in letting go of that? It was kind of a, yeah, a relief. Bring up that feeling of fear. Mm -hmm. Go into that moment and tell me where you were feeling your bravery and courage. I wanted to cry at one point, and then I thought, be brave and... Just it, stick to it. It just kind of came out in me to like be strong. Good, so you, you, you access that bravery. So bring up that bravery and feel that, access that right there. Yeah, I can see it. It's right there, because the fear was there, but there's no such thing as fear without bravery, and you can't really have bravery without fear being there. It yeah. doesn't exist. Can you see that that scene was a dualistic event? It wasn't just one-sided. Yeah. Are there any other negative emotions that remain in that scene? No, that was pretty much it. Okay, so what was the benefit of you going through that as a 10-year-old? After they left, I, we had those realizations. Mm -hmm. You know, I really understood that I'm not just invisible. I'm not so alone in feeling pain. Perfect. So that you, it took that event for you to realize that you are not the only one. That was my first understanding of uh, empathy. We discovered that that was the kind of the birth of his empathy, his superpowers, the things that he is known for, his relatability, his art, the stories that he tells when he's uh, when he's rapping. Most people that I work with with trauma, they realize that that scene when they were four years old, five years old, was the spark or the birthplace of their intuitive self, their creative self, their spiritual side. So really neat realization of how that scene served him. How it helped me was to now be able to speak and to see everyone as the same. <laughs> what would you change about that scene? Probably that I didn't get any scars, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to this reality scene of you with the resume last year. Give me another negative emotion in that scene, what you had inadequate, right? Go into that scene again. Okay. Tell me where you felt superior to others. Tell the truth. I felt that... Uh... You have to be real. Like I was putting 100% and that they were just putting, you know, 50% in. So you were a harder worker. Can you see that you had both superiority and inadequacy in that moment? Mm -hmm. Good. And even when I was working, the success was the fact that I was going to use working and all that money As towards music. As a fuel to music. Okay, yeah. good. Bring that feeling of success up is that you're not giving up. You're still maintaining your dream. Any other negative emotions that remain? No. Great Best sense. healing is, is when you're grateful. Yeah. There's no other, you know, I'm sorry, I forgive you. There's no really, the high, to me, the highest form of forgiveness is the authentic recognition that everything served you and that there really is nothing to forgive. Yeah, this is an, like an actual formula where you can go, okay, these are the steps, I can ask these questions to myself, and I can go, oh, this is actually what I'm getting from that. So it's a lot different than anything I've actually seen. It's awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so we came back to the reality now, and what do we find where we are not where we want to be in our lives, where we are com comparing our realities to a success or a, a fantasy, be careful what you wish for, because at this time, if you're not there, it's probably because you don't have the structure to be able to handle the challenges that come part and parcel with that thing that you're fantasizing about. So be grateful for where you're at. Because when it does eventually come, it'll bring to it a whole bunch of crap which will also suck. So you might as well be grateful for where you are just right now. Go ahead and hashtag Ask Dr. Nima for any questions pertaining to mind, body, life, stress, from your cells to your spine to your soul, anything to do with transformation or stress, feel free to hashtag Ask Dr. Nima and I'm gonna do my best to provide you with an answer.